Hello, everybody. We are live. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Corey. I am from Roman Bookstore. And today I have the delightful pleasure to be hosting Victoria Cairn. She's going to be discussing her new book, Rubylicious. Uh, Victoria is award-winning illustrator and author of the picture book series, Pinkalicious. She also wrote and illustrated Goldalicious, Silveralicious, Emeraldalicious, Aqualicious, and Peterific. <clears throat> Before we get started, there's a little bit of business. Um, if you have yet to purchase the book, you can do so by, there's a little green button at the bottom of your screen. You can hit that button at any time during the event and purchase the book. Also, we have time for Q&A after the event, so if you have a question for Victoria, please put it in the little tab at the bottom of your screen that says, Ask a Question. And I think we're ready to go. You ready? Yeah, I'm so excited. Hello, 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 everybody. I am so excited to see you that I, I had to put on my tiara. And I don't know if any of you are wearing a tiara, but I also had to put on my sparkly red shirt because I am celebrating being with you. And here we are. This is, this is my office. Um, I am in Connecticut. And this is where I write and illustrate over, I've done over 70 children's books. Uh, all Pinkalicious books, and this is also where I am co-executive producer of the Pinkalicious and Peterific TV show, which is on PBS Kids. And this is where I come up with all my ideas, and I do the artwork, and I do the writing, and I have my Zoom calls, and it is, for me, the best space ever. And I don't know what it's like for you right now, but it's 54 degrees here, and the leaves are turning, and it is beautiful, and I am so happy to be with you and I even have my magic wand I want to ask you a few questions I, I hope you don't mind um I don't know if you can see all these books but who out there likes the color pink does anybody out there like the color pink has anybody read pinkalicious does anybody want to read pinkalicious and if you like the color pink what I want you to do is raise your hands way up into the sky just like that Woo! pink what about the color purple does anybody out there like the color purple have you read purplicious when pinkalicious disco discovers the power of purple do you want to read it if that is you then you know what you can do you can take your feet and stamp on the, on the ground like this and make a lot of noise. It's okay. Your grown-up won't mind. Your grown-up can put their fingers in their ears. What about gold delicious? The beautiful sparkly color gold. In which this story, Gold Delicious, Pink Delicious, finds a unicorn and spends the whole day with a unicorn. Have you read Gold Delicious? Do you want to read Gold Delicious? If that is you, then tap the top of your head and wake up that brain and say, good morning, brain. What about Aqualicious? Do you love the beautiful color aqua, the color of the sea? Have you read Aqualicious? Do you want to read Aqualicious? In this story, Pinkalicious meets a miniature mermaid. If that is you, then wave your arms just like a wave. You can just wave them just like that, and we are waking up. What about Emerald Delicious? Have you read Emerald Delicious? Do you love the sparkly color green that is the color of an emerald? And in this story, Pink Delicious takes a garbage dump and turns it into a beautiful sparkly garden. If that is you, then wiggle your fingers like this. Oh my goodness. What about Silverlicious? Do you like the color silver? If that is you, you loving the color silver, and in this book, Pinkalicious discovers that sweetness comes from the inside. If you want to read Silverlicious or you have read Silverlicious um, and you like the color silver, then wiggle your toes in your feet. Oh, doesn't that feel weird? Oh, that's really good for you. And what about Peterific? Have you read Peterific? 
Do you want to read it? And P Peter builds a tower of blocks all the way up to the moon. If that is you, wiggle your shoulders. Just get wiggle those sillies right out. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. And what about Ruby Licious? Are you excited to read Ruby Licious? Clearly, I am very excited. If you are excited to read Ruby Licious, then jump up and down. It's okay. Your grown up won't mind. Oh my goodness, I see that you are jumping up and down and having a lot of fun. Are you ready? Now find your seat. <sighs> Take a deep breath in and exhale and grab your book. But first I wanna show you this rock. This is just a regular rock, right? But you know what? Rubies start out looking just like this and then they go to a rock polisher and a stone cutter and they end up looking like this very sparkly so i thought that would be good to know so if you have a book you can read along with me or you can just listen to my story and here we go let me get in a good spot so you can see the whole book here we go ruby licious written and illustrated by Victoria Can. That is me. And after I read the story, I am going to show you in a PDF presentation how I come to write and illustrate the books and how I make my artwork. But I just want to show you, look here, look at the grass. Do you see all the musical notes in the grass? That I love to put lots of layers. And do you see that castle? Do you know that castle is made of collage and I've collaged lots of buildings together? Like this is actually from a pink palace in India and these are from Russia and this is from Northern Europe and I collage them together and I paint them and I do it all in Photoshop and it is really fun. Thank you. Thank you all for joining me today. While playing, I found a little stone for my rock collection. Oh, do any of you like to collect rocks? I wonder, what do you like to collect? Oh, you like to collect toys? Oh, that's fun. That's a good thing to collect. I love all my rocks, but I love this one the most because it is my one hundredth rock i said showing my collection to peter my brother that rock is old and dirty said peter i can clean it i said rubbing it with a cloth see it was dirty and now it's um uh, still dirty peter picked up the cloth and started rubbing the rock i don't know pinkalicious i think you could find a nicer rock than this one Suddenly, the room filled with a puff of red smoke and a figure appeared. That's a lot of red smoke. Pink smoke would be much prettier, I said. Red is a pretty color too. Just think of it as very dark pink, said the figure. You found my home on the luckiest of days when all the rotating hemisphere coordinates are aligned with the number one hundred said the figure so now you have me your very own grantor of wishes congratulations wishes wow are you a genie asked peter aren't genies supposed to be in a bottle i asked i am not a genie i wouldn't live in a bottle because bottles get recycled she said i can live anywhere in trees or even rocks okay We'll call you Rocky, I said. I guess that's fine for now. You get one wish. After I grant your wish, I am free to go, said Rocky. I thought genies gave three wishes, not one, said Peter. As I said, I am not a genie. I grant one wish, no more. Granting wishes scares me. You never know how they're going to turn out, Rocky said. Oh, well, that's a lot of pressure, right? Just to have one wish. What would you wish for? I wonder what you would wish for. Can I wish for a pile of sweets? I asked. 
that sounds like a, a wonderful wish, but uh, I'm not sure, Rocky said nervously. Let me show you first, then you can decide. Puff, a big cloud of smoke swirled around us. Suddenly, we were standing on top of a giant mountain of candy, cupcakes, cookies, and ice cream. Wow, this is sweet fantastic Peter and I shrieked with happiness, trying to eat as much as possible. Would you wish for a mountain of sweets? What would you eat first if you were there? Would you go and would you eat this lollipop? Or would you go and have a gingerbread cookie? Or what about ice cream? What do you think's gonna happen? What's wrong, Rocky, I asked. I'm worried about how this wish will turn out. Is this your very best wish? Your most favorite thing in the world? She asked us meekly. It's pretty amazing, said Peter, but my stomach hurts. I ate too much. And my head aches from so much sugar, I said. The candy started to melt into a colorful swirl and we began to sink into it. Maybe this isn't a very good wish, I said. Let's go back to your house and eat something healthy. Can you wish for something else, Rocky asked. What do you think they're going to eat? What would be healthy? Did you read Pinkalicious? So in Pinkalicious, you know she has to eat green food, right? What do you think they eat here? Oh, they eat red food. <gasps> Look how nutritious and healthy that is but delicious. Who likes strawberries? Does anybody there like strawberries? Oh, raise your hands. Oh, what about cherries? Do you like cherries? Do you like raspberries? Oh, I'm impressed. You like all that and grapes too. What healthy eaters do you are? Do any of you like apples? Raise your hands. Oh, you love apples. You are very good eaters. Well, you're going to have to teach all the grown-ups around you to eat so healthy. That's wonderful. What if I wish that we could fly? Asked Peter. Oh, dear. Oh, dearie, dear. Would that be the very best wish? Is that what you want more than anything else in the entire world? Rocky asked. Yes, said Peter. Then I will show you your wish, she said, her voice shaking. Poof! A cloud of smoke formed around us as we floated out the window and into the sky on a flying machine. This is fun, horrific, I screamed while we zipped toward the clouds. Whoa! Be, 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 be careful, Rocky said anxiously. Do you think this is a safe wish? <gasps> what do you think is going to happen? Look out for the bird, Pinkalicious Peter hollered. Peter, watch out for that plane, I yelled. Eek, Rocky screeched. This might not be the very best wish. Let's think of something else, I said. Yes, please, something safe, begged Rocky. Oh, look at Rocky. She can't even look. She's hiding her eyes. Oh, no. I have always wished to be a princess in a castle, I said. And I could be a prince, said Peter. Okay, if that's your very best, most favorite wish ever, Rocky said doubtfully. Poof, a puff of smoke revealed a beautiful castle. Wow, it's pink amazing, I said. Yes, <gasps> everyone thinks they want a castle. Rocky sighed. Where are you, Peter? This castle is so big and cold. I was shivering. I'm by the drawbridge. There's something in the moat. Oh, look at that. What is that? And what is over there? What else do you see? Careful of the alligator and watch out for the fire-breathing dragon, yelled Rocky. <sighs> Achoo, Rocky sneezed. I'm freezing and frightened. Brr, maybe wishing for a castle isn't the very best wish, 
Let's go home, I said. That dragon scared me. Flying made me dizzy. And all that sugar <laughs> gave me a bellyache. Rocky cried and hid underneath the covers. I'm sorry you really are afraid of everything. The wishes would have been better and less scary if we shared the sweets with all the kids in the world, I said. And added seat belts to the flying machine, said Peter. And used the fire-breathing dragon to warm up the castle, I said. Well, Pinkalicious and Peter are very clever kids, don't you think? Why do you think they could come up with all those ways to solve the problems? How do you think they did it? I think they aren't afraid, right? When you're not afraid, you can think clearly and you can problem solve. I was too scared to think of that, said Rocky. I wish you were brave because then you wouldn't be afraid and then you would have more fun, I said. That would be our very best, most favorite, Peter added, wish in the whole wide world, I said. Would you do that? Would you be very kind? Would you give your wish away? I wonder. Have you ever noticed though, when you're really kind, that that comes back and that can transform your day? Like if you share something with somebody or if you say something nice to somebody, how have you noticed that they're really kind back and suddenly you both feel really good? Well, look what happened to Rocky. Rocky is transformed. Pinkalicious and Peter, you made a wish for me, said Rocky. Smoke swirled around her and she began to sparkle and shimmer and so did her rock. I held it in my hand as it glittered. It's, it's a ruby, I said. That's right. My real name is Ruby. I've been cursed for a hundred years by someone who didn't like their wish. You broke the curse on this lucky day when you generously made a wish for me, said Ruby. Ruby swirled around. I am not a genie, but I am a genius. And now that I'm not scared, I can grant your wishes. Poof, there is a castle. It's a little smaller without dragons and alligators. I hope you enjoy your new flying machine. It has seat belts and helmets. It travels slower and doesn't go very high, but you can make it go upside down and sideways. Whee, I said, trying it out. Oh. Doesn't that look fun? Look at that. Lastly, here are nutritious lollipops guaranteed to last forever, Ruby said. Peter and I hugged her. Thank you, Ruby. They are Ruby-licious, we yelled together. Ooh, the end, yay. Thank you so much for listening. And I'm going to take a sip of water and then I am going to show you how I create all my artwork. Okay, I am going to go to share screen. And I hope that's good. You will let me know if it's not good, but hopefully that is good. And I am Victoria Can. I am the author and illustrator. I write the stories and I do the artwork. And these are my characters, Pinkalicious and Peter. I write all my stories about them and they are loosely based on my two daughters. Here they are in their Pinkalicious dress up outfits with Pinkalicious cupcakes. And they have greatly inspired me to write my stories. And I have over 70 Pinkalicious and Peterific stories. I am wondering, have you read all of them? How many of these have you read? 
Have you read the, uh, there's a Thanksgiving one, and then there's a, a Christmas one, and there's an apples, apples, apples one, if you like apples. And now I have written and illustrated Rubylicious. And I have also done an off-Broadway play, Pinkalicious the Musical. Here's a picture of the cast in front of it. And I've done the TV show Pinkalicious and Peterific. I wonder how many of you have seen it. And I love working on the show. Here are the characters. And the animation company is in Ireland. And I speak to them every week. And we do lots of fun things like come up with the outfits that Pinkalicious and her friends are going to wear. And we'll make decisions like, will Pinkalicious wear a, a, a pirate's hat? Will it have a skull and crossbones? Or will it have a happy face and crossbones? And then we'll talk like pirates too, because we love to do that as well. And I'm from New York City. I am actually from Brooklyn Heights. And if you look all the way down on the bottom right, you'll see a white building and that is a white lighthouse. And I grew up right up the hill from that lighthouse. And when I grew up in New York City, it was really ugly. There was graffiti everywhere. This is the subway and it was very awful and I didn't like it. So I always imagined that I was in places that were beautiful and colorful. And I began to develop my imagination because I did not really like it there. And for gym class, every day we had to go to Cadman Plaza Park. Here's a picture of Cadman Plaza Park. And this is a big oppressive war memorial. And it was really very not enticing for a child. And we had to stand in the field right before this war memorial and we had no organized activities. It's not like kids today with organized activities. And we just had to stand there and I hated it. So I begged and I pleaded and I begged and I pleaded to the teachers, can I please go inside where it's warm? Can I please go to the library? And guess what? They let me go and I loved the library. We had a wonderful librarian and she would always bring me lots of books and she would say, what are you doing? And I'd say, oh, I'm just playing. And I would read all the stories and I developed a love of stories. And that's where I really began to imagine lots of things because I would read about these characters and think of all the wonderful things that were happening. And this is one of my favorite books back then. I love the book Madeline because she was in Paris. And I imagined that I could be in Paris with 12 other girls who walked in two straight lines. And I love this piece of artwork the best. This is Miss Clavel deciding, running through in the middle of the night, something was not right. And I loved the composition because it's so expressive. There was the big door all the way on the left and the little door and there she was practically diagonal. And I always thought this was better than the Mona Lisa. So when I did Pinkalicious, I, I thought of that piece of artwork and I thought I made Pinkalicious really large all the way on the left and her mother uh, smaller on the right. And I made that diagonal to be as expressive as that wonderful page uh, in, in Madeline. And then I loved this very odd book because it was made using photographs of dolls and bears and they lived in Central Park. And that was in New York City and I could go to Central Park and I always imagined that I might see them. They've just gone to the pond and they've just uh, sailed Mr. Bear's boat and I thought that was wonderful. And I love the story of Eloise because she lived in New York City in the Plaza Hotel. And I thought, oh, wouldn't that be wonderful to live in the hotel? And she was very naughty and I was never naughty. I did not like to get in trouble. So she could be, she could be the one who could get in trouble. So I imagined I was Eloise. And she also had a very funny pug. And then I love this story. And this was a book my grandmother gave me and it had photographs as well. And they changed, it's called a Tinky Winky depending on how you move the page. And I love that it was illustrated using photographs and dolls, even though it's a creepy story, it's Hansel and Gretel, which I found very scary, but I liked this one. So I've always been inspired by sweets and cupcakes, and here's a delicious looking cupcake, but now I am inspired by 
red food and green food. This is what I love to eat more than anything else. This is a blender and I, I make smoothies every morning and they're delicious and they're very sweet and they're so good for you. So before I became a children's book author and illustrator, I did covers for magazines and book covers. And these were the illustrations that I did. And at a certain point, um, the work kind of dried up. People stopped buying magazines and they began to get all of their news on the computer. So I didn't have any work. So I decided to uh, become a children's book um, illustrator and I uh, brought my work I, to children's book publishers and I said, can I be a children's book illustrator? And all the publishers said, no, nope. We can't imagine what your work would look like in a children's book, even though I did lots of work that would look appropriate for a children's book. And I said, what, can't I do that? They said, no way, no, you're gonna have to write your own children's story. So I, here's a file with all the children's stories that I wrote that were rejected. And they were, I, it was terrible. All my stories were rejected. I thought I'm never going to become a children's book illustrator. I'm never going to become a children's book author. So I didn't know what to do. And then it became my favorite day of the year, which is April 1st. Do you know what day of the year it is? Raise your hands if you know. Oh yes, you know, April 1st is April Fool's Day. It is the day that you get to make jokes and play pranks on people. And I love doing that. And so I, I love saying things like, oh, did you see the fish? They were flying. Did you see the flowers? They were making funny faces and smiling and laughing at me. Did you see that flying machine in the air? Did you see that? So one April Fool's Day, I said my daughter had, who loved the color pink and loved her dress up outfit and loved cupcakes. And she wore this outfit every single day. I said she ate too many pink cupcakes and she turned pink. And I wrote it in an email and I sent it to all my friends and my family. And uh, my daughter was supposed to have a play date. And one of uh, the mother of the girl called me up and she said, well, I just got your email and uh, we are not coming over because I do not want my daughter to get pinkatitis. And I called the pediatrician and the pediatrician said it could be contagious. And I am very, very worried my daughter might get it. And I said, April fools on you. And she said, that's an April Fool's joke. Well, you should turn it into a story. And I thought, oh, that's good. So when I wrote Pinkalicious, I worked with my sister. Uh, she's in the bathing suit and she's actually a doctor. So she doesn't work with me anymore. Um, but together we worked on Pinkalicious and uh, Purplicious. And this is what I did. I took my email and I made it a little longer. And then I did little drawings in the margins of what I thought should be illustrated on each page. And then I thought, what are my characters gonna look like? And I began to imagine the characters. Uh, would they, would the dad wear a funny hat? Would he have glasses? Would he have a tie? Would Pinkalicious have ribbons in her hair? Would the dad be bald? What, what would they look like? And then the next thing I do is when I write a story is I break it up. Children's books have 32 pages in them. So I think what is going to happen on each page? And this is for the book Purplicious. And do you see that bus page? Um, if you know uh, Purplicious and it's on the second row, the third one in, look up that bus page. That was a sketch for it. And then these, then I make a little bit bigger sketches and these are still only the size of my thumb. And this was for Goal Delicious. And um, look at that picnic scene on the lower left. I love doing that sketch. And this is what it ended up looking like. And then I make something called a book dummy. Isn't that a silly name? And I, it's just like a little pretend book. 
and I put all my illustrations in it along with the words. And this was my first book dummy for Pinkalicious. And this was just for myself. And this is Pinkalicious when she's had too many cupcakes. And then she has to eat green food. That's the sketch. And that's what it looked like in the finish. So then I made a, a nicer book dummy. And you look at this one and you can see that this is very different from how the cover of the book ended up looking like. Do you see Pinkalicious's nose? It's a very different nose and her mouth is very different too. And I wrote out the word Pinkalicious in frosting. And then this is what it ended up looking like. We decided not to have Pinkalicious be pink on the cover because it would give it away what happens in the story. And this is Purplicious, Goldalicious, Silverlicious, Emeraldalicious, Aqualicious, and Peterific, and Rubylicious. And here's my studio where I'm sitting right now at that desk. And then these funny dolls keep me company while I work. And this is how I work on the computer. I have a, a tablet and it's almost like drawing and I look up at the screen. And then I do collage, so I have filing cabinets behind me, and in the files are, are all sorts of cut up pictures. And you can see I have a file on shoes and hats and one on boxes and one on wings. And here's what the inside of the wings uh, file looks like. Look at that, they're butterflies, they're birds, they're angel wings. And this is what the inside of the dessert file looks like. Do you remember the candy canes? that you saw on the page uh, of the pile of sweets. Well, you can see where I cut them out. And so the stuff that I cut out starts looking like this. And then I paint it and I change the colors and I work on it. And sometimes I go shopping in old catalogs. This is where I picked out mom's shoes. And sometimes I collage things together. Like here, I cut out pieces of paper to be mom's hair and Pinkalicious's ponytails, and then I scan them into the computer. And here are three-dimensional objects that I also like to use. Uh, for example, doilies. I like to use doilies, and I like to use printed patterns. Now look at this pattern. I want you to remember it, and I'm going to show you how I ended up using it. I now work in Photoshop, so um, do you see that pattern? There it is on the butterfly's wings. And then I use a map for the middle of the butterfly. And the bee has musical notes and graph paper. And I collage it together and I use it, put it together using lots of layers. Here are some of the layers. And I'm going to show you how I put together one of the illustrations. So uh, I, I made all these flowers. Some I painted the texture using a sponge. Some I found a picture of flowers and I cut them out and I put them here and I start uh, making a collage. And then here are some pictures of uh, clouds that I took and I scanned into the computer and then I changed the color and I made it really soft. And then I added grass and uh, made it really green. And then I added Pinkalicious, remember the doilies? Well, look at her wings. There are the doilies, I've used them there. Then I added a swing set because uh, Pinkalicious is at the playground. And then I added Peter. And then I added all the flowers. Um, there they are. Um, Pinkalicious and Peter uh, is blending in with the pink peonies. And this is how I did the Peterific cover. Uh, first I do a sketch and I think I'm going to have Peter standing on a pile of blocks. So then I put it together in Photoshop and I add Peter. I add a striped shirt and I start putting him in position. And then I have to actually build the tower with blocks. So I take pictures of the blocks and I start putting them together and I have to start building the tower. And then I think, well, I'm gonna change the color from it being very colorful to being all one color. And I give him his telescope and I put him on a sky background. And then I decide to give it a glow and uh, I start adding shading so he looks very dimensional and stars and a shooting star. And then I, I start putting it all together and more light. And then in the end, I decide, nah, no tower. I want him much bigger. And uh, I am greatly inspired by all of you. A lot of you do wonderful drawings and you can share your drawings with me. 
I'm on social media. I'm on Think. Uh, I, I'm on I am Pinkalicious, uh, Instagram and Facebook. And you can contact me on Instagram, Victoria B. Can. And you can share your drawings with me and I will post them on Instagram. And this is a wonderful drawing that somebody sent to me of Redalicious, which inspired me to think about if I did the color red, what would I do? Would I do red delicious, scarlet delicious, crimson delicious, ruby delicious? And then this is coral delicious. And these are just wonderful drawings that I've gotten. And this is at a book signing and that truly captured my expression. And if you go to thinkpinkalicious.com, there are lots of games, really fun games, mazes and word games that you can print out. And for all of you homeschoolers and teachers out there, there are even curriculum guides. So this is what inspires me, my beautiful, beautiful garden. I love the colors and the textures and my dahlias are really beautiful. And, and this is, um, my lovely cat, Gustavo, who is a, an incredible hunter. And my dog, Snickers. And uh, this is the meadow right outside my house. And he loves to run and chase and play. And these are my two daughters now. You saw them when they were younger. And here they are now. And I want to say knowledge is limited while imagination embraces the world. That's a quote from Albert Einstein. He thought imagination was really, really important. And you can't do anything in life unless you imagine it. So you might imagine the outcome of something or imagine what you want to do or what you want to create. Uh, you can change the world with your imagination. What are you going to create? Are you going to do a dance? Are you going to write a story? Are you going to paint a picture? Are you going to make make music, what are you going to do? You might do a drawing. You might do a story. What inspires you? Well, thank you so much for listening. I'm so happy to be here with you. And I'm going to stop sharing my screen because I know you have questions and I would love to answer them. Thank you so much. Hi, that was so awesome, thank you. I loved your book. I loved hearing all your stories oh, about the stories you. about how you write. Um, we have quite a bit of questions. Are you ready? Yes, I am. Okay. So you have a few here from one in particular. Their name is Joe. And first of all, he'd like to know how you're doing, um, how right. long you've been doing this. And if you have a next book coming out. Thank you, Joe, so much for listening. Uh, do I like doing this? I love doing this. Uh, this is really fun for me, especially connecting with all of you. This is this part is the most fun for me. Um, and I have been doing this. My first book was Pinkalicious, and that was published in 2006. So I am just, uh, I've been doing this for a while and I really love it. And I am always working on something new. So right now I am working on early reader books. I do a lot of early readers. Um, and uh, like, for example, this is one, a uh, robo pup where Pinkalicious gets a robotic uh, dog, which is really fun. And this is really fun. Uh, it's a birthday book. And everybody has a birthday and everybody, a lot of people like to have Pinkalicious parties. So this is a perfect book for that. And um, uh, Merry, Merry Christmas, Here, here's one. And right now I am working on a story in which Pinkalicious um, has a kindergarten buddy. And her buddy is really, really afraid that kindergarten is gonna be boring and dull. And Pinkalicious shows her that kindergarten is really fun. So that's one of the books I'm working on right now. And then I'm also working on the TV show, which is really fun. I'm working on an hour long special for the TV show and uh, stay tuned because that is going to be very colorific. So. That's awesome. 
office. Yeah. What's it like to work on a TV show? I mean, is it different from just being up there in your studio writing? Oh, yes. It's really, really different because it's a collaboration. So there are lots of people who work on it. I have, I mentioned the, the amazing animators that are all the way in Ireland. And I love the way they speak. And they are so much fun. And we Zoom just like this many times during the week. And we go over how the show is going to look. And then there are writers who are all over the world. They're in England. And then they're in New Jersey. And then they're in LA. They're all over. And they, they write. They come up with um, uh, stories. And we I go over every single draft of an episode. And then there are the actors, and the actors are all in Canada, uh, which is really interesting. So it's very, very international. And then there are the people who work on it, the producers, and they're in Boston. So there are people all over, and it's a huge collaboration. And I'll tell you, we are all unified because we all believe in creativity. We all have the same vision, which is to empower children to be as creative and imaginative as possible. And we all know that the way that you become imaginative is by playing. That's right, like playing with crayons or drawing or making music or dancing. And that inspires creativity. And the more you do that, the more creative you become. And it is the only TV show out there that is all about the arts. And that includes theater and pretend play. So um, where that's can a we, very, where, sorry, very where can you answer. see this? <laughs> it is, it, you can stream it on PBS Kids or you can see it on your local PBS station. So uh, that's the same thing with my books. It's all about being creative. Whether or not you're a scientist or an artist you have to be curious and that's what being creative is oh so um i guess this what the answer kind of goes along with with this with this question from someone they want to know what what was your first drawing um and did you know after your first started after your first drawing if that was just something that Kept developing? Did you know you wanted to be an illustrator and a storyteller right away? Oh, that's such a nice question. Thank you for asking me that. You know, I I um, I don't remember what my first drawing is, but I have saved my daughter's very first drawings, and I have put them in a portfolio, and I have asked them. So you should save all your drawings, and I asked them what their drawings represented. It. Rep their, what their drawings represented. And I want to show you something. One of their drawings looked exactly like that. And that looks just like a scribble. But when I said, what is that drawing of? My daughter said, that's me spinning on the swing. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> so I wrote on the back of the drawing that what it meant to her. So I saved all of those. So I hope you save all your drawings and you write or you get your grown up to write. And the, the thing that propelled me to be an artist was just that I, I liked it. Sometimes you can do a drawing and it doesn't come out the way you imagine it should come out in your head and it can be really frustrating, right? Sometimes if you're trying to draw something really hard and every time that happened, I just thought, well, I'm just gonna try again. Maybe next time it will look like that. So I love the process. It just makes me feel good. And I also just love going into my own world and just sitting there and drawing and not thinking about anything else. So that's that's what inspired me to become an artist. I hope that answered the question. <laughs> oh, I'm sure we could probably talk all day on that too, though. <laughs> There's another question sort of on, along the, the same lines. Of, they want to know um, if the story is already developed before you do the drawings or if the story develops as you develop the drawing. Oh, well, I, I like to first I write the story and then um, when I write the story, I think about what it is I want to draw. So when I was working on Ruby Licious, uh, I was thinking, what is it that would be really fun to illustrate? And 
not only did I think it would be fun to illustrate um, a mountain of sweets because it's so colorful, but I thought it would be even more fun to illustrate them sinking into a, a pile of sweets. I thought that would be really, really fun. So, um, so I think about it when I'm coming up with my um, with my story, but because I am both the author and the illustrator, when I am, after I've written the story and I'm illustrating it, I can go back and change the words sometimes, you know, and I always do that. I'm like, you know, this would sound so much better if I wrote it like this. So right up until the end, I am changing and tweaking. And to be honest, even when I read the story, I forget that it's printed because I think, oh, I should have said this. I, I should rewrite this, you know, so it never really ends when you're a writer and an artist. <laughs> I understand that. <laughs> um, someone, someone else is wondering um, how long it takes. Well, they want to know from conception until shelf book on the shelf. Like, so when you have an idea, yeah, it can all take the way to the end. Like, how long does that take for you on one of these books? It can take a really long time because um, you know, first I write the story and, um, I actually like to go away over Christmas and go skiing and my family goes skiing and I just sit in the hotel room and I just write stories. And so I'll have a few stories. I have a few stories in my, my files. So I'll just write stories. And then I, um, uh, then I have to come up with the, the book dummy. So I have to do all the sketches and, uh, and then I have to, figure out what that's going to look like. And then I have to send it to my publisher, my editor, and see what they think. And they might not like it, or they might want me to rewrite it. And then we have to do a contract. And then the lawyer goes back and forth with the publisher. And then well, finally, I get the go ahead. That takes a long time. And then I get the go ahead. And then I just sit and I don't leave my house. And I just sit for eight months and I just do the illustrations. And then it needs to get printed after I hand it in. And that can take a while. So it can take years, actually, to see one of my finished alicious books. Wow. So how long, when was the first book printed? How long have you been doing this? 2006. Like, uh, but I think but you've it already was, said that, but I, I'm just like, wait, when, how long have you been doing this? Yeah, but it was actually, so I first came up with the idea in 2004. And then it took two years to get it published. And I was so lucky that I found a publisher. They didn't think it was going to sell. They only printed up a few, a few thousand copies. They didn't think anybody was going to buy it because it was my first picture book. And, and they, they, you know, I'm an, I was an unpublished author and they were, they didn't even like the color pink on the cover. They, they, I remember. They, they didn't like this color. They wanted it to be really, really light pink. And I said, no, no, it's got to be really bright pink. And then it's got to go lighter. I don't think they were used to somebody who had such a strong vision of the color pink. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. They have a new perspective of pink. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It what means so you many doing before? I, did I you, did, were you a, an artist or did you work? Where I could see you as an architect, I guess. That's why I asked. Like, what were you doing before you illustrated? No, books? I did all those magazine covers. I was just an illustrator doing a magazine editorial illustration. Yeah. So that's that's amazing. I mean, um, I, I guess I just I feel like wow. So you just you really you just imagined it and you went for it for it that you just go yeah, after your thing. Yeah, I think it's. Yeah. I think it's really, really important. And let's go back to wishes too, uh, Ruby. Yeah. Wishes. I would like all of you today to write down something you wish for, whatever it is, whatever you imagine it to be. I, you know, think about what it is you would wish for in life, anything, and write it on a piece of paper. And, um, and then just put it, you know, I, I have a wishing board and just put it, you know, I just tape it. It's inside a closet. I tape it on the inside of the closet. And, you know, you might make a wish for yourself. Like, 
I wish that I'm really good at reading, or I wish that I could read 10 books in a day, or I wish that I could write and illustrate my own book, or I wish that I could do a drawing that I feel really proud of, or I wish that I had pink hair instead of the color hair that I have, or whatever, I wish that I had a puppy, or I wish that um, I had a kitty cat. Uh, make that wish today, write it on a piece of paper and look at it in the future six months, a year, I bet your wish will come true. I, I know wishes do come true. They do come true. I'm an example of that. My wish came true. I wish that I would talk to all of you one day, that I would be a children's book author and illustrator, that I would be here. And I, I, I wish that I would be specifically speaking to all of you today in LA or wherever you are. And, um, and it was very important to me and here it is it is happening so i bet your wishes might come true let me know contact me on uh i am pinkalicious instagram let me know i want to know i'm gonna write down a wish too i'm yeah. gonna join all you guys and write down a wish too i'm gonna write one too i'm gonna tell you that my wish a lot of fun. I'm, gonna, I'm excited i am wishing for two kittens two beautiful lovely kittens that's what my <laughs> wish is i hope it comes true it's a, it will like you said yeah yep um i don't know if i should say what my wish is but i i will i wish that i could um let go <sighs> so that my imagination can come back that's a really good wish. I, I think, I think, um, I think I have that wish too. I think we all kind of have that wish. And you know, here's another wish that's really good. I wish to feel fulfilled in what I do. That whatever it is that I do feels really fun and satisfying and fulfilling. I think that's a really, and, I, and that was a wish that somebody, I did another one of these, um, and that was somebody's wish who was listening. And I remembered that wish. So um, I just thought that was mm -hmm. a wish. That's a, that's a really, sometimes wishes aren't always materialistic. No, not at all. I can no. wish for, like, I have all, I have a huge list of wishes though. Like if we're gonna go there, I'd be like, I want. Coco Chanel perfume. I wish for that. <laughs> yeah, that's a nice wish. That's a good wish. It's always out of stock. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. I love your book. It was amazing. Um, I, I want to read all your books now. I'm like, all right, I'm going to go on a, on a Pinkalicious a bender here oh i hope um, you do i mean i've written over 70 and i hope I, I would love to meet one person out there who has read all of them that would be really fun that okay challenge accepted <laughs> you're gonna get an instagram from me one of the, one of these days in the next six months oh yeah all 70. <laughs> oh my gosh that that is great there's a graphic designer that I work with at Harper Collins and um, she knows every book and I can say to her something like you know I did the this butterfly book or uh, or I'll say which book did I work on which has um, um, you know which has the birds in it and she'll say oh the parrot book oh just look on page you know, 10, she will, she's memorized the pages and, and every, she knows everything from every book. I call her a, a pink, she's like an encyclopedia. Amazing. Encyclopedia, yeah. Pinkopedia, that's what I call her. Um, someone just asked a question if you had story time at your library. If this, they, I think they, it has something to do with you going to the library all the time. They want to know if you have had, had story time there. No, I, no, I, I just did uh, an event at the library last weekend. I did have story time there last weekend 
and I read the Halloween book. Um, and that was really, really fun. And everybody came dressed up in Halloween costumes. And so, oh, every, so often, yeah, it was really fun. And I was a pink witch. Um, so yeah, I do it every so often. It, and it is really fun. There were about 150 people. So it was, it was a blast. Yeah. That would have made me so nervous. I would have just been sweating. <laughs> <laughs> I was. Oh. I would have just been like, uh. Well, you're so brave. Um, I that was it for questions. Oh, I asked a few you. of my own. Thank you for indulging. Um, is there is there anything else that you, is that you'd like to let the audience know about, or is there um, is there a website I can put into the chat for them to to reference to? Um, oh, so um, I don't know if you, some of my books, do you have the signed books there at, uh, at the store? Because some of the books are pre-signed. And um, on a few of the books, I did a little drawing on the signed pages that, you know, look like this. So if any of you out there get a, a, a book that has a little drawing on the inside, you must contact me and let me know that you got that book. And again, you know, I contact me on social media, Victoria Bican, Instagram, or I am Pinkalicious. You can answer, uh, you can ask me questions, send me drawings, and um, uh, do, you know, uh, contact me if you, if you want. And then, of course, Think Pinkalicious, where, which has, uh, you can see all the books. And it has all the games that you can print out. And of course, PBS Kids, where you can watch the show. But I, I just want to leave you with this. Um, people always ask me, what is my favorite color? And my, I, I really love all the colors of the rainbow, as you can see. But I have a preference for pink because pink represents joy to me and happiness. You put it with orange and it's a big party. But most of all, pink is the color of love. Yeah. So I always say, think pink in my books and on the show. And what I'm really saying is think love. I'm giving you a secret message now that only you know that I am saying think love and I'm sending all this love out to all of you. So I'm saying goodbye and think pink. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you thank so you. much. Thank you, everyone. And anyone who has come late, there is a replay. It will happen as soon as the event is over when I hit the end broadcast button. So if you'd like to share this with anyone, any of your loved ones or your neighbor or your cat or your dog, they like to listen too. So thank you so much. Thank you, Victoria. Thank you. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you. Have, have a really fantastic day. Bye. You have a great and awesome day. Wear that tiara all day. Oh, and all of you, keep your keep your imaginary tiaras on. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye.